as I showed you in a previous video here is the DC operated solar deep freeze LED light I like these glass sliders lots of loose meat Got lots of baskets great for organizing uses very little power right now it's saying minus 8 it's in eco mode the voltage on 24 volt system is at 27.2 We'll take you outside and show you what I've got connected for this uh, this particular setup. This is an independent solar system for my deep freeze alone. Now these six 100 watt panels are what's tied into the deep freeze. The deep freeze is in that storage shed. I've got them set, I think, at fall and spring angles. An easy way to figure out the angle for certain times of the year summer solstice obviously it's uh, whatever your latitude is and in the northern hemisphere here I think it's 30 something degrees uh, add 15 30 degrees I think I'm at 66 for the winter months and I put them like I say whatever your latitude is for the summer months so they're they're adjusted in between right now and it's it's almost February month, so stay tuned and I'll show you the battery bank for this particular system. By the way, the two 100 watt panels on the outside, I've got them for maintaining the battery in the snowmobile. Or that, or that. This is the separate independent battery bank for the deep freeze on its own. Got eight batteries there. And it's got its own charge controller. And over here we've got this is our main power source. And the Magnusine Magnum Energy 4024. It's a 24 volt system, 4000 watt continuous power. This is the main battery bank. And there's six volt batteries, GC15s. I've got them configured for a 24 volt system that disconnects on everything for safety reasons, obvious. It's all labeled. And here's my AC input from the generator if the power. Oh, my battery bank happens to go down below a voltage that I don't want them to get down to. Then I've got my backup power. I can just start up the generator. It's automatically where it's tied into this. It automatically charges this main system. And for the independent system for the deep freeze, I've just got one of these battery chargers that maintains this particular bank. I'll show you the new solar array that's for my main uh, main power. So really you can see right now we've got 185 watts coming in. It's an overcast day. We've got an approaching winter storm. Battery voltage uh, 25.7, 83%. So this particular charge controller, a 24 volt system, can take an array of up to 1600 watts and between 36 volts and 120 volts. So with the configuration of 1240 watts coming in, I had to go series slash parallel connection in order to stay under that uh, voltage. You see the max VOC is 150 volts. I had to stay under that. So I think I'm currently at about 133 volts uh, when I've got maximum power coming in. As you can see, that's that's the sun. 
very cloudy day, not much coming in. But with the current solar array that I have set up, it's uh, it's enough to keep keep everything topped up. And this is the latest addition I put in last uh, late last summer, early fall. See, so they're 310 watt panels, four of them, 1240 watts total, all aluminum framing. Don't have to worry about uh, deterioration, corrosion, etc. Do get some extremely high winds. So far, it's been holding up okay. And again, as I mentioned previously, because my voltage was about 170 volts, if I just went in series, I had to go two and two parallel and then series uh, connection with each two. So that kept my voltage down below 150. The latest edition I'll share in another video. Got a portable band sawmill for some future builds here at my off grid cabin. Any questions you guys have? This is stuff that I've uh, incorporated all on my own. I did a fair amount of research through the years. I think this is probably year eight, maybe longer. I incorporated solar here at my off-grid home, and it's paid. Uh, it's paid. It's paid for itself, probably many times over. Uh, solar is relatively cheap nowadays, especially the panels. I did experiment with uh, wind energy, wind turbines. That didn't work here, even though it was extremely windy in my area. But the technology is just not there unless you're going to invest in a sixty thousand dollar wind turbine so i always suggest to people if you're going to consider going uh, with with uh, renewable energy like solar or wind I, I encourage them to go solar so much cheaper and you just allow for the cloudy overcast days like we have today and you add more panels so all together i've got i've got over two thousand watts in solar right now and it's been holding up pretty good. I do suggest uh, and encourage everybody to keep your battery banks at a level above, if you can do it at all possible, 70%, it's so only 30% discharge, 50, and you're gonna, your cycles, your amount of charges, life of your batteries is gonna go down significantly. If you go any less than 50%, you've basically wasted a ton of money on your battery bank. That's just my two cents worth. Some other folks out there may have had better luck with batteries, but me in particular, I suggest uh, adding enough battery bank, enough power, so that you never have to discharge your batteries less than 70 or 50, and keep them up, keep them topped up. Um, check them if you're using uh, traditional deep cycle flooded batteries with lead acid, whatever. Check them periodically, once a month. Top them up with distilled water, need be. Probably share that in future videos whenever I can. Um, I would suggest to stay away and avoid sealed batteries. Sealed batteries, they can't be maintained by the owner. Once they're, once they're dead, they're dead. There's no bringing them back to life. So I switched, uh, initially I had AGM batteries, glass mat, and it was a big mistake. They're much more expensive and i didn't get any more than five six years before they started causing issues so i went back to the, to the deep cycle lead acid flood of batteries and uh, so far i've i've had no issues with those like i say you're able to maintain them and keep uh keep the water keep the fluid levels up anyway if you like this video and you like any more off-grid living type uh, videos feel free to have a look through my channel a big variety of, of videos with regards to how I've got to this far I've been living here since 2009 it's 2022 now a lot of it was trial and error a lot of it was um, a little bit of heartache and uh, and headaches 
but through the years I've I learned to improve how I can be a little more efficient living off grid. Feel free to give a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and feel free to share. As always, take care, and thanks for watching.